Thank you, Steffi, for this very warm welcome. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and thank you for the task I was giving to introduce a little bit of optimism in times of crisis. And I'm more than happy to do so since I'm convinced, I would also say, a structural optimist. Probably one has to be a structural optimist to be a venture capital investor, but uh, I'm one of a special kind, I think. Let me share a couple of thoughts and data with you in the next 15 minutes in order to underpin my source of optimism. First of all, is it working? It is. Um, first of all, um, we all have seen what the last years have brought, an unprecedented momentum in venture innovation investments. Actually, I missed out on updating the number 2022. The true number which we come in was 84 billion. So um, even though we've been in the crisis in Europe, we still remained on an almost all-time high level, even in the last year. And this unprecedented momentum is actually driven not by financial markets, but it's driven by fundamental technological market developments. First of all, um, we've seen, or we are seeing an acceleration, exponential acceleration of innovation of um, novel platform technologies. If we go back to the 80s, we have on average seen a new platform technology such as the PC or the Internet coming up every 10 years. So the PC in the 80s and the Internet in the 90s, and the mobile Internet um, in the 2000s, etc. If we now look at 2020, I would state that we are seeing five plus six, seven new platform technologies. A platform technology is a technology which serves as a basis for multiple new startups to be created. New platform technologies, I start with cloud computing, AI, we just heard about generative AI, so the next generation of AI. We're talking about quantum computing, um, new energy. Uh, I will give you an example of uh, nuclear fusion, new space. You know, satellites coming down from 20,000 uh, kilometers in height to 300, 500 kilometers in height, offering totally new services, etc. And, and all that comes at a time at, while we are sitting here. So, this, um, so the, the, the platform for new innovation is broadening in an extent what we have never seen before. At the same point of time, technology is helping to scale technology. And this is why business scalability has increased significantly. Um, in data, we've seen um, a shrinkage of um, roughly 50% of the necessary funding to reach unicorn valuations over the last five years. We've seen a shrinkage in time from inception to unicorn uh, by also almost 50, or rather 40%. Things are scaling much quicker than they used to scale. We see also a broadening of the, um, um, yeah, of the human basis for innovation through a declustering of the um, traditional incubation or innovation hubs. Traditionally, we've seen 80% um, of uh, the relevant investments in Europe, in London, Paris, Berlin, Stockholm, maybe a little bit of Munich and Barcelona as well. But that was 80%. It also reflected the numbers where we allocated our, 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 our funds in the past. This is actually referring to what, what, what Steffi said before. Our days, that number has already shrunk below 50% and it will probably go down to 20%. And this is driven by um, the virtualization of the ecosystems. So um, remote areas, non-urban areas have been decoupled from uh, VCs, from um, business angels, from um, peers, whatever, which led to a low innovation rate in, um, in, in rural areas. That has changed significantly. And nowadays, we see enormous um, and impressive um, new companies coming out of, if I talk about Germany, Heidelberg, Siegen, Darmstadt, Landshut, where we've invested recently, Areas you probably have never heard about. And this is the same thing we see in the US. Miami, as a venture hub, has grown, I think, um, by a factor of 22 in the last decade, while the Silicon Valley grew by just four. 
That is observed by the venture industry and mature venture markets are um, therefore pressing into rural areas, if you want. So uh, we in Europe press into uh, non-urban cities and um, US venture investors press into Europe. So this is a global um, development we are seeing and it leads to a much more balanced um, distribution of venture investments and uh, to an activation of the innovation, the mental innovation potential, which is not in the hubs. And let's not forget, only 15% of the Latin entrepreneurs are actually living in hubs. 85% are living somewhere else. And if we can activate that innovation potential of these brilliant minds, that has an impact. So, however, um, the situation is not bright. We know um, after 10 years of an uninterrupted upswing, we have entered uh, in a crisis, in a bear market. And, um, but what I would like to emphasize here, um, let's not be frustrated by this, because this is only, I mean for us important, but only valuation. We're not talking about, this is not an innovation um, um, index, it is just indicating that valuations for venture and uh, novel um, um, companies have come down quite a bit. And that has happened before. It's not the first crisis we are in. I personally have been in the 2000 crisis. Yeah, that old I am, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I've been in the financial crisis, and now um, we are running through the third one, um, the third, uh, third time through such a crisis. And historically, it has taken us roughly three years to get out of that trough. I predict it will probably again three years. So um, if we count 21, um, fall 21 is the start of the upswing. Um, we may see um, uh, good times again somewhere in 24, at least if historical patterns would apply again. And what you also see, obviously, the impact on later stages have been always more significant than an early stage, but this is something I think we all know. This, in turn, for the beginning of 23 is also a very good message for us venture investors because what's coming down is going up again and um, um, investing in the trough is probably the best, uh, best what one could hope for um, when allocating money. So what we can rightfully expect for the um, current funds to be allocated that we will be having tailwinds which we haven't had in the past exactly, especially in the vintages 19, 20, 21, we have probably a little bit of headwinds uh, since um, entry valuations were inflated to some extent, and now we are running through um, the contrary picture. Again, it's interesting to do some analysis on what we have seen in the past. If we go back to the financial crisis and do a little bit of the math, what you see here is what we did is we looked at um, global venture funds for collectively for the vintages 2005 to 2007, six years after inception, always six years after inception, and look, um, have looked what has been the um, cumulative performance after six years. And for the vintages pre-crisis 2005 to 2007, collectively on average, global venture, the collective performance Cumulative over six years was poor 77%. The same analysis for the crisis vintage done 2008 to 2010 leads to a more impressive figure of 173%. So um, it is pretty clear investing in crisis will deliver significantly better performance. It's not surprising, I know, but it's always good to look, also look at the numbers. This is Cambridge Associates, so this is probably one of the broadest um, database you can find for venture funds. It clearly says, now is the time to invest. And also, as we all know, good old Winston Churchill did, that, and, uh, did know that, yeah. Um, never waste a good crisis or let a good crisis go to waste. Um, since crisis times require more creativity, um, it, 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 you know, it um, encourages people to become more innovative and change alternative routes since um, the beaten tracks do not perform so well in crisis. So, um, um, you know, again, um, never change a winning horse. If you're in boom times, you're less prepared 
to, to try things out. Um, this is the opposite in our days. And of course, um, factor costs uh, may come down um, because resources are better available in crisis times than they are in boom times. We have seen um, a ban an enormous amount of um, uh, successful cases all being founded and created in crisis times. So those investors who have missed out and continue investing in challenging times have missed out on the very best opportunities historically. And the good message is it's happening again. I will give you an example which is pretty close to my heart because it's probably one of the most impeccable innovations uh, we currently run through, and this is uh, nuclear fusion. It's probably um, the single most promising perspective um, to solve climate change. I think uh, the impact of what's happening there cannot be overestimated. And you may or may not have heard about recent um, success um, um, announcement um, mid of December when the next National Ignition Facility out of Livermore in, in the US announced for the first time in mankind net energy generation through a fusion experiment. This is not the, the, the final solution. Um, the, you need to understand it was net energy gain in the target. So it's not what we call plug, wall plug efficiency. So um, they used a laser with a 300 megajoule um, and they brought 0.2 uh, megajoule into the target and created 0.3 megajoule in the target. So um, if you start with a 300 megajoule from the wall plug, um, it's still not good. But um, it shows, and this is why the curve for me is so, so, so um, encouraging, the exponential speed of innovation. So we, there is no reason to do an, a linear extrapolation what's happened in the past uh, which leads to um, uh, the first uh, nuclear fusion power plant somewhere in 30 to 40 years um, in the future. No, it's, um, it is an, an exponential curve. And you see it very clearly um, in the record fusion yield um, we experience. And if we then go to um, one of my favorite investments here out of Munich, which is a laser-based, actually the only laser-based nuclear fusion startup in Europe, Marvel Fusion, and, and that technology promise to, 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 to show a 4,000 times higher yield than the record yield which we have seen in December 2022 in Livermore. 4,000 times more. And when? In three years. We're not talking about something in 10, 15, 20, 30 years. In three years. And what they promise actually to show is the first power plant already in 2030. If that happens, I think the impact cannot be overestimated. That would mean we, we, we're going to be able to bring um, um, the principle of sun to earth and that within 10 years. And if that happening, um, yeah, this is probably one of the only solutions I can think of um, for climate change. Just one, because it's so impressive, um, 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 that technology will go and will run with a fuel called uh, Proton Bo 11, uh, which is um, um, everywhere and very cheaply available. One gram of Proton is delivering um, as much energy as a million grams um, um, of, 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 of coal. So it's a million times more energy efficient than, um, um, than coal. Or another example, you need 440 kilos of proton bore 11 um, to fuel or to generate the entire energy of London for an entire year. Just 440 kilos, amazing. And this is just one example. Um, we talked, or we heard about in the, in, in, in the panel before about generative AI or um, uh, um, artificial general intelligence, AGI, at the next level of uh, generative AI. The exponential um, performance increase in this area is, is, is breathtaking. I mean, um, I don't know whether uh, uh, one or the other of you have ever tried ChatGPT. It's, it's amazing. And it's still um, based on GPT-3 as a standard. GPT-4 is going to come. And it will be another. Um, um, step function with respect to performance. Um, and I can go on and go on. If I talk about quantum computing, um, we've seen the first working quantum computer out of Europe 
um, this year, um, produced by Electron out of Heidelberg. Um, the performance of um, Electron's quantum computer is 100 times higher than what we have experienced per qubit, what we have seen um, uh, from the IBM quantum computer um, in the US. It is innovation is, is, um, is going at light speed in an exponential curve, and I think um, that should give us enormous optimism. And it is almost, it is, it is the opportunity and it's almost our obligation to support that and fund that into the future because it will do good to mankind. So this um, is, obvious, or is, is um, fortunately also observed by the industry. If you look at venture investments um, in the last year, it, they came down, as I initially said, from 105 to um, 84 billion. Um, this is a decline um, um, <clears throat> yeah, due to the crisis. However, investments in fundamental innovative company and deep tech companies have kept up, actually grew slightly from 21 to 22. So uh, the industry is shifting away um, from um, known um, business model innovation, um, uh, marketing investments to more fundamental um, investments into deep tech innovation, which I think is a good message. Let me close uh, with that said. Um, what would that mean for us as a VC industry? I think um, in the very first place, we have to make sure that our truly innovative and um, yeah, future-minded companies have to um, remain afloat. So um, it's not always easy, especially um, if we talk about deep tech companies, which are usually pretty capital intensive and refuse to deliver revenues for quite some time. So um, we quite usually often talk about hundreds of millions of pre-funding necessary to keep them afloat. I mean, we talk about Marvel Fusion, you can imagine until we're going to see the first working um, uh, um, nuclear fusion power plant is going to take probably three to three billion. This is enormous amounts of um, risk capital necessary. Um, and it is not uncommon for these deep technologies. And it's our task to find solutions to make this happen. Um, I think um, we have to be aware about the democratization of innovation. I was talking about uh, the decentralization of hubs, so driven by the virtualization of the ecosystem, so everybody, um, regardless where he or she is living and is located, can now participate in this um, innovative ecosystem, which is a great, great message because it unlocks the huge potential uh, from innovation potential from non-urban areas, and we haven't had that before. It actually opposes a significant challenge for our industry because getting access to, this, to these innovative founders, to these innovations out from nowhere, is much more challenging than participating in um, the decisive um, conferences in Munich, uh, London, and Berlin. It's more, so we have to find solutions. It's our task. Um, we should use the creative stimulus of a crisis. Actually, the crisis is a good message. I, I said that before. It, 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 it drives um, innovation and creativity, and we have to use it. We should use it, and we have to continue to seed great ideas which are um, 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 yeah, in, in created all over the place um, in, our, in, in, in these days. And last but not least, and this is a special task for us um, in the European VC industry, we have to find access to significant growth funding. Um, uh, the VC industry is especially suffering from insufficient capabilities in, uh, in scale companies um, when they have come to a proven, um, um, yeah, to, to a certain point of maturity and will require um, not 50, but hundreds of millions. This has always been a weak point in our industry and we have to solve that issue. Um, uh, we're working on it, but it's not yet there. I'm, however, optimistic that we're going to be successful with that. As I said, initially, I'm a structural optimist, not only for what we're doing and where we're investing in, otherwise we couldn't do that, um, but also for our industry. And I think um, the best times are just ahead of us. <laughs>